Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to Ask That Podcast here on YouTube. Man, looking at it, you know, come, quite a few years been doing this, you know, three a week. Give a shout out. I want to give a shout out to Dale Roy. He's the one that came with the idea. Why don't you put these out like, you know, instead of filming 20 and dumping all 20 in one day, you know, put them on certain days of the week. And I settle on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And that's the way it's been. And shout out to Cody LL. I was like, hey, man, you do a lot of comic stuff in the road. I just don't watch. I'm not a comic guy. You know, you should be reading comics, Cody. Tell you what. You go out and buy a comic trade and read it all. I'll sit down and watch three Hammer films. Make you a deal there, sir. I'll sit down and watch three Hammer, Dracula, or Frankenstein films. I'll watch, I'll watch Hammer films without Oliver Reed. But, all right, what we got here, this is Uncanny X-Men, annual number 10, buck 25, 1986. So I was about 12-ish when this came out, 11, 12. Um, this is after... Issue on Candy 200 because you got Magneto's part of the team. So we got Magneto, Magneto Shadowcat, Nightcrawler, Wolverine, Colossus, Storm, and Rogue. Think this is before Storm got her powers back. We got introducing the newest X Men Longshot, Arthur Adams, and Terry Austin on the cover. This is a newsstand edition. This is an issue I never got back in the day. I didn't understand back then when I was subscribed because I subscribed to Uncanny through the mail, through Marvel. You know, paid the X amount of dollars. Every month I got the issues in. I thought the annuals were included in that. I didn't know they weren't. So when I saw the annual on the newsstand, I'll get in the mail. And then when it didn't come in, I go back and it wasn't there. Plus it being a buck twenty-five. That's almost double what I was paying. So I like how and I got this idea. I'll, I'll crib this idea from Cartoonist Cafe. How they'll take something like this that you know more people should know about. Art Adams. Amazing artist. You're never gonna get him on a monthly series. He's too slow, but he would do. X Men and the X Men. Honestly, at this time frame, this is right before Mutant Massacre. And my whole my opinion on the X Men is from Giant Size Number One and Uncanny Ninety Four to about Fall of the Mutants is a really good run. And then Claremont just kind of shits out stuff for a long while. I'll admit, Fall of the Mutants Inferno is not bad. Man, Inferno was not good. Once you get past Inferno, whew, there's just some horrible stuff in there. But these annuals were always really good. And we'll see what we got on this. We got Chris Claremont Monster Rider, Art Adams with Pencil, Terry Austin's Anchor, Petra, excuse me, Scott, Scott said, Scott to see, I'm guessing it's the colors, Tom Orachowski is the letter, of course, and Ascenti is the editor. We start off, you know, like a lot of excellent stuff does. In the Danger Room, they're all fighting each other. We got, look, this is the old rogue. Shadow Cat, Colossus, Wolverine, you know, Nightcrawler, Storm. There's Magneto. This is after Charles Xavier has left. Magneto is in charge of the school. There's Psylocke. There's a Sunspot. I'm guessing that's Cypher or Cannonball. Mojo. Laser Tag. I remember Laser Tag being the Gumby comic strips. And what this is, is that all of a sudden out of nowhere, Longshot appears in the danger room, and this is when Longshot ends up becoming a member. Not long after Psylocke. And this is the old Psylocke, the British Psylocke, not the Asian Ninja Psylocke. Actually, I love Psylocke the character. I prefer the look of the British Psylocke to the Asian Ninja, because Asian Ninja is just, oh God. Some of the artists just went too far away. I'm like, man, I don't really want to put that up on the wall, because that's, that's even rough for me. Yeah, you know, it's over sexualized the character. And I love that you know, Ilana Rasputin, uh, Colossus' little sister, Magic. Of course, there's Warlock, there's the rest of the new music, there's Kitty Pride, and R. Adams drew a great Kitty Pride. He made Kitty look like she's this time frame, Kitty was supposed to be fifteen at the oldest. And in most artists drew she looked like she was, you know, twenty years old. Art Adams drew a teenage looking kitty because Kitty Pryor was supposed to be the same age as most of the New Mutants because that was the big thing. Xavier wanted to put her back on, wanted to put her on the New Mutants scene because they were closer age, and she said no, no. So we got all this going on. It's just some great artwork, and I want to say this might be yeah. This is look, you got the X Babies. I want to say this is the first appearance of them, which is just younger versions of the X Men. And then, I like this. These are our graduation costumes for tonight and the matter, and maybe the rest of our lives. Oh, great spirit, I hope not, I pray not. We are the X Men Mirage, Wolfsbane, Karma, Cannonball, Magic, Sunspot, Cypher, Warlock, and Mag. Mag okay. From the movie. It's the big fucking purple. That's Cannonball, of course. You know him. 
Uh, Magic was Anya Taylor Joy. Mirage was uh, the Native American girl. I can't think of her name now. And then Wolfman, of course, was um, oh god, the girl from Game of Thrones. Can't think of her name now. Arya, Arya. I don't know what her name is. The, yep, the Maisie Williams. So now they're having to be the X Men team and take on the baddies. It just let's say gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous Art Adams artwork. And this was found in my local comic shop. In the dollar bin, I might even got it for fifty cents. But sometimes if I buy always, oh man, it's clearing out because they, I got a feeling they that comic shop it survives on cards. Says cards and Funko Pops and stuff like that. Comics are just hey, we buy them extremely cheap. We make a little profit. Cool, yeah. And then yeah, one second. Okay, sorry about that. But um, what was I saying? I don't remember. But you know, you find these uh, up every time. Get find these cheap, and they're really good. There's another there's one after this, because I remember Psylocke being out. I want to say she's still in the same outfit, but she might be in the ninja outfit. Where it's like Alan Davis does the art, and it's really good. And they show you how far Wolverine's healing factor goes. These were all they Marvel's annuals, even though a lot of times they were not done by the regular creative team. But a lot of times they're usually better than what's coming out monthly, like. Uh, Perfect example, for the first two, maybe three annuals of West Coast Avengers, the annuals crossed over with the Avengers. At the time, West Coast Avengers was worth reading. Avengers was not. But the West Coast, the annuals of Avengers were really good. They're like, there's a, when they fight the game master, just really good stuff. So, you go find this ticket, say how you're cheap, and, you know, it's like I said, this is not a mint copy, as you can see. It's beat up. It's a reader copy. This is one of those where you don't mind leaving this laying around. Matter of fact, this was laying in on the table right next to my chair while I sit in the living room and read. Because on the stack to read, I've read it when I got it and just had forgotten I even had it. So, boom. Hope y'all enjoyed that. If you did, give me that thumbs up. Leave a comment, subscribe. And for comments, you know, what is your favorite you know, X-Men story from the comments nobody ever really talks about? You, know, you hear about you know, all the big crossovers, you know, issue 100 where, you know, Magneto's on trial and Professor X leaves and Magneto takes over school or for me, a big one, my big one is 193, the 100th appearance of the new team of X-Men where Warpath, calling himself Thunderbird 2 at the time, shows up and like Firestar and all that, you know, what's yours? All right, everybody, talk to everybody later. Bye-bye.